Hello and welcome to the Formlabs User Summit. Uh, this talk is going to be on aerospace. So my name is Sam Rogers. I'm a test pilot and lead designer at Gravity Industries. And at Gravity, we build the jet suit. And essentially what that is, is five turbojet engines placed around the body in the most minimalist way possible, such that it allows a human to fly. With this suit, we've demoed all over the world for the last, in recent years. Uh, and it, we've shown that it is an incredibly versatile and dynamic thing to fly. You can get somewhere that a helicopter wouldn't be able to, and you suddenly become free to move within space, whether it's over over grass, a river, a boulder field. You can just glide over the top of it with a jet suit. So on this development journey, we've used 3D printing a huge amount, and that is from large SLS parts to print the entire backpack section to smaller SLA parts that we use to prototype some of the hot sections that sit by the turbines, all of this really has been made possible by 3D printing and the design freedoms that come with that. However, I'll talk more on that later. Today, I want to talk about a small project that my company have done, which is a small vortex-cooled rocket engine igniter. And essentially what this is, is a tiny rocket engine uh, that allows you to ignite a larger rocket engine. And normally when you prototype these small rocket engine parts, even large ones, you want those to be made out of metal alloys because they can take the very high temperatures in rocket engines. However, that costs quite a lot to do and it takes at least a day or two to print the parts. Whereas what we started experimenting with is using small SLA printed components, which even though they don't have the same temperature capacity as a metal part would, they last for a small amount of time under the very high temperature because they are resin. If it were a thermoplastic part, it would just melt straight away uh, and the part would be compromised as soon as you heat it. Whereas if it's resin, it ablates. So you have you know, a good few seconds to actually get some good test data from it. So we started printing these parts that would normally be metal in resin. And the benefits were we would now get the part in a few hours rather than a day. And also that um, the parts are a hell of a lot cheaper than metal parts. So this actually allowed us to iterate our way to a successful rocket engine igniter much faster than we would have normally been able to and for much lower cost. So I'll play the video now that shows these tests and how we iterated this design through really blowing up a lot of small resin parts to the point where this was actually working well. We have servo-operated valves, pressure and temperature sensors, and a high-voltage spark generator for ignition, all mounted on a sliding set of rails that transfer the thrust through a load cell. Timings for valves and the sparker are sequenced with a microcontroller. The first test ran on propane and compressed air to get an estimation of valve and sparker timings to reliably ignite the chamber. Then we were ready for pure oxygen. The spark igniter activates before the valves open, so that the propellants are ignited as quickly as possible. If oxidizer and fuel build up in the chamber, then ignite, you can get what's called a hard start, which is basically an explosion, which breaks things. The chamber was designed to be modular, so we swapped out the shattered nozzle. These first tests with a long chamber show that the characteristic length of the chamber is too long and thin to sustain a strong swirling vortex. Modularity helped again here, allowing a shorter chamber to be swapped in. This worked much better, easily sustaining vortex combustion. In this test, you can see ignition and a slight vortex, then the combustion shifts to outside of the chamber. The flame looks spectacular, but it's not producing any thrust and is no more than a blowtorch at this point. This chamber was 3D printed in resin on a Formlabs Form 3. As we test, the nozzle throat slowly erodes due to the high temperature. If we were to 3D print this on a normal FDM printer in thermoplastic, the parts would melt and become unusable as soon as they became warm or hot. This shows the difference between a resin print and a thermoplastic print on a hot plate. The resin part keeps its shape, but the plastic part melts. Under a blowtorch, the resin part ablates, which means it burns away a surface layer, but remains mostly intact. The printed thermoplastic part melts, losing its form. Printing this small combustion chamber in resin allows for short test firings, while avoiding the very high cost of metal 3D printed parts. 
As you test for longer, the nozzle throat slowly erodes, but you get a good few seconds of testing before it does. As with any material, when it gets very cold, it becomes brittle. When flowing liquid propane through the nozzle, it caused this brittleness, so on a hard start, it shattered the nozzle. Again. A new nozzle later, and we got the best firing yet. A clear supersonic matte diamond pattern is present in the exhaust. The inner chamber wall has no heat damage because of that shield of swirling oxygen. Only the nozzle throat erodes because of the extremely high temperature it's under. In a metal version of this igniter, just the throat would require some regenerative cooling channels to keep it from melting. The transparency of these parts is what makes it a brilliant demonstrator, because you can see the combustion taking place inside the chamber. All of these tests are made possible by the fact that the Form 3 is printing in resin, so it's able to withstand the higher temperatures and also you can create really high fidelity orifices within the injector. So I hope you enjoyed that. That really shows how resin printing served the process of iteration and getting to the point where we actually had a functional rocket engine igniter, really by blowing up lots of resin parts along the way. However, what I want to talk about now is how we're using resin printing on the jet suit and specifically flexible resin printing, because both in the grips of the jet suit, where you want it to be comfortable for your hand, but also on electronics ports, where we need to seal those against any kind of water or dust ingress, because what we need to do with the jet suit now is turn it into more of a product. We've flown this prototype around the world for multiple years now, but we need to get it to the point where it can survive, it's much more robust and it can survive much more extreme weather and use situations. So dust and water getting in, those are really important. So flexible resins that can seal electronic ports will be really useful. So that's what we're experimenting with at the moment. Um, and really this entire design process is, is served by 3D printing, whether it's SLS, SLA, FDM, the, it's enabled us to actually iterate our way through so much faster because we don't have to spend any money in molding, we can iterate, we can change the design every time we print it. And um, so 3D printing everything has really served us over the years. And what we're actually doing with these jet suits now is search and rescue applications, as well as um, special forces applications where we're moving people from boat to boat and training them to fly. We've just done a demo in Dartmoor in the UK where there was a simulated casualty up on a mountainside and a hike that would normally take them about 35 minutes for the paramedics to, to get to them, we flew in 90 seconds uh, with the jet suit and then provided medical stabilization through the kit we can carry on the jet suit so that the patient is stable for when those hikers do arrive and they're able to carry them off the mountain. So we're experimenting with lo lots of practical applications for the suit, and this is really served by 3D printing, as I've said. Anyway, thank you very much for listening, and you can follow us on Take on Gravity on Instagram and other platforms if you want to follow along with the journey. Thank you very much.